Are you buying a property in 2022 and wondering how you're going to be putting your offer forward and the best practices to do that? In this video, we're going to go over it. Hi there, Leah from Leah at Property and on this channel I am passionate about helping as many first time buyers buy their first home. Over the last 18 years I've dealt with thousands and thousands of property transactions so if you're after the best tips and advice you are in the right place. Over the last year, 2021, it's been an unprecedented year for the housing market as well as other sectors. We've seen house prices going up by 10 plus percent, depending where you are in the, in the country. We've had multiple buyers for each property. It's just been a massive, massive frenzy. So this advice is for the current market, end of 2021 and going into 2022. Anyway, disclaimer over, let's get into the tips and advice. In a normal market, the usual way would be to offer 10% less than the asking price and then work your way up from that. But if you know there is multiple interest, multiple offers and viewings on the property, that really shouldn't be the way you go forward with it. So finding out how much interest there actually is in a property is really key on where you should be starting with your initial offer. And you can do this by one of two ways. You can ask the estate agent how much viewings and how much interest there's been, but just be aware they work for the seller, they're trained to get the best price for them. So they may over exaggerate the amount of interest, um, but just bear in mind, depending on the market, which is quite busy, they could very well be telling the truth when they say there is many other people looking and viewing. The second way you can gauge how much interest there is in a property is if you are lucky enough to see the seller at the home when you are viewing, you can ask questions which may give you an indication as to how busy they are showing people around and how much interest they have got. During conversation, if you can drop in lines like, oh, you must be sick of showing people around your house, or is it weird having strangers come through? Listening to the owners uh, answer those questions can give you subtle hints, which may indicate whether they've had lots of people through the front door or not many at all. And these hints will help you when you come to offering later on down the line. Another thing which cannot be underestimated when looking at properties is building up a rapport with either the estate agent or the seller that is showing you round. If you're lucky enough to see the seller at the property showing you round, then building up a really good rapport and relationship with that person can go a long way into helping your offer get accepted. I've, I've been accompanying many, many viewings where buyers have really tried to strike up a conversation with the seller, build up a rapport, a relationship. If you build up that rapport and that relationship, that seller, could be more inclined to selling to you over another party. And I've seen it loads and loads of times, two identical offers from two people in the same position and the seller has gone for the person they clicked with the best. Remember that the amount you're offering isn't the only piece of the jigsaw puzzle when offering on a property. Your position is a key factor which could play a part in whether your offer is accepted or rejected. Being a first time buyer with your mortgage agreed in principle and ready to rock and roll, is a massive, massive plus for most sellers. Your ability as a first time buyer with no chain gives you that flexibility to move quickly or slowly. And also, if the seller does require a quick or a slow sale, and it fits in with your time scales, you can factor this into your offer as well. You can move at their pace, but as long as it works to your advantage as well. But I must stress, if you are going to offer a quick sale, then you need to have everything ready beforehand. Your mortgage agreement in principle, the solicitors you're going to use, any documents that the solicitor is going to ask for you, get all that ready before you start making offers on properties. There's no point offering a quick sale if you can't actually facilitate it. Another piece of that jigsaw puzzle will also be that rapport you built up with the seller when you was on the viewing. If you built up enough of a relationship and they remember you and liked you, that also could be that final missing piece of the jigsaw which could get your offer accepted. Now let's piece all this together and find the best way of putting your offer forward to the seller. There are two ways you can put your offer forward. The first one would be verbally via the estate agent over the phone, but my personal favorite is to ping it all in an email. Your offer being sent in an email means that there's no confusion with the figure that you're offering and there's a paper trail of the conversation as well. The benefit with also sending an email is that you're able to attach documents like your mortgage agreement in principle and your proof of deposit. If you also have a solicitor or conveyancer that you're going to be using to buy the property if your offer is accepted, then pop that in the email as well because the uh, estate agent will need that. Now, let's put all this into a body of text that you can send on to the estate agent. So first of all, you wanna be saying, hi, I'm blah, 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 I view such and such property and I'd like to make an offer. Then put in the amount that you would like to offer, 
along with your position. Now stress that you're a first time buyer and if you can move quickly and you know the owner wants to move quickly, pop that in there. On the flip side, if you know the seller uh, may struggle to find somewhere straight away and may need a period of time to find somewhere or whatever the reason and you can offer that flexibility in a delayed sale, then make sure you put that in there as well. In the email, let them know that you've attached your mortgage agreement in principle, your proof of deposit and your solicitors. That shows that you know what you're doing and an estate agent loves when a buyer just provides all the information without being asked. It's, it just, just separates you from most other buyers. So please don't forget to include that information. Now you can also put in the email how much you got on well with the seller and how much you love the property. But in my experience, the estate agent is after three things from your offer. How much you're offering, you have the ability to pay and go through the process and your time scales. And by doing what we've said, uh, just a moment ago, that is going to give everything the estate agent needs to put your offer forward. But we all know that sometimes the price that we offer on a property isn't exactly what the seller wants and we may need to increase. Now the following section is going to be the formula I would use if you were to increase on a property. In my opinion, if you're going to increase uh, your offer on the property, your first increase should always be your biggest. In our example, uh, our property's on for £255,000 and we've offered two fifty. So your first increase should be the biggest one that you want to make. And this is providing that you're happy to pay the asking price and not a penny more. If you do want to pay more than the asking price, then really consider if the property is worth it. And if you did need to sell in the future, would you get your money back? Anyway, back to the example. We've offered 250 and we need to increase our offer because the owner has said no. My first increase on that 250, bearing in mind if you want to pay 255 for it, is the max we want to pay for it, would be 252,000 pounds. So we made a 2,000 pound increase. If that gets rejected, my next offer would be 253. If that then got rejected, 253,500. And what you can see is each time we're increasing our offer, the amount is reducing by 50%. That will tell the owner and the estate agent that you're getting closer and closer to your maximum price. But please don't get carried away in the offering process. While you're emailing or speaking to an estate agent, these numbers may not seem real at the time, but there will come a time when you take on the mortgage that you're gonna to have to start paying this money back. So don't get too excited, don't get carried away, have a fixed price that you want to pay for that property and don't go a penny above it. You're the one that's gonna pay this back at the end of the day. Talking of money, if you're interested in knowing how much it actually costs to buy a house and uh, how much this is cost, I'll put a video up here for that. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time. Take care.